Hi, I'm Dino Stamtopoulos, uh, creator of Moral Oral. Uh, this is um, the second of the last episode. Um, I felt like uh, I definitely needed to explain this to everyone, this, this episode, because uh, it's probably the most, uh, the hardest one to understand. I hope it's the hardest one to understand. I hope there's not a harder one to understand. Um, I barely understand this episode, and I wrote it. So uh, this one, uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it's the second from the last one. And Josh Jennings directed it. Um, uh, a lot of it was, uh, was made in, uh, in editing, as uh, I'll explain as coming up. In the animatic and in all the early cuts, this opening, um, which is a little different, uh, it has the more mysterious music, and then uh, you see Miss Sensor Doll's hands part the clouds, and then you see her uh, uh, her little model of Moralton, which is set up in another episode, uh, an episode called Alone, which I think is going to be the fourth episode episode premiered. And uh, alone is probably the reason uh, we're not doing any more of these. <laughs> um, but uh, so what we did in a lot of early cuts is we had dialogue from previous episodes because you had to watch at least uh, offensiveness from season two to get a lot of this. Um, so we put a lot of dialogue from offensiveness over this opening montage kind of with an echoey voices, like setting up that this episode takes place part in the past, part in the present, and even part in the future. Uh, and then when we showed Nick Weidenfeld, he said, I don't think you need it. I think it's self-explanatory. Um, you guys did a great job cutting it together. Uh, so I'm still not sure. But uh, uh, if not, I'm here to hold your hand. And will you hold mine back at me? So uh, <clears throat> we put a little rewind noise in to really hit home that this is <laughs> we're going back in time again. Also, three months ago helps in the uh, Kyra down there, uh, and you'll see Clay walk in and uh, from his stinking dead end job, whatever that is, um, and uh, and and so hopefully it sets up that this is somewhere we've already been, and um, we're sort of seeing more scenes within the story uh, that we've already seen from season two. <sighs> Stinking dead-end job. Dinner will be a tad late tonight, dear. How tad? Oh, about a half hour. I need to finish this banner for Oral. Save it. Out all the eggs that come from between the legs. Oral, we've tried our best, young man, but it's high time we gave up. No! We just have to outlaw eggs, Miss Sensodal. They're evil. Please, quit saying that. Hey, I've got an idea. I don't think you get me. I am sexually challenged. A carnally disabled human being. I don't think that's what that sign means. Word nerd. I think it's about time that you started forcing people into not buying sinful, disgusting eggs. Sorry, Oral, but I can only employ police brutality when it's officially against the law. Oh, well, how can we make that happen? Gotta convince the mayor, son. The mayor? Gosh. Okay, so uh, we've set up. There's a mayor. Oral's a little nervous to meet him. We haven't really met him yet, or have we? I don't know. Um, and, uh, and hopefully at this point you get that, uh, you know, we've gone back and we're, we're back in time and we're, it's before Oral got all the eggs, uh, where he made eggs illegal. And this is the process he went through. He went to, to see the mayor. 
The mayor will see you now. Golly! Mr. Mayor, I'm here to suggest... Oral? Dad! What are you doing here? You're... You're the mayor? Uh, don't remind me. Stinking dead-end job. This is great! Now you can outlaw eggs! Whoa, now, my young man. That's serious business. It may make me unpopular with some very important people. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, his dad's the mayor. Uh, it's something I wanted to do since the beginning of the show. And uh, halfway through making all these episodes, Mike Lazo called me up and said, uh, you know, we were making 20. And Mike said, Dino, I got to tell you, uh, these shows are just too depressing. I mean, we can't, we can't do any more of these. And I said, you know, I mean, he's right. They were depressing, and it wasn't what they bought. It wasn't what I sold them. I went a little crazy this season. And uh, so a lot of the episodes are, uh, are, are kind of serious. And, you know, I mean, part of me likes the idea that there's, you know, these little cute puppet toys being serious. That, to me, is kind of funny. But also, I care about these characters. Anyway, so uh, he was very nice, and he said, look, you know, I want you to finish the season the way you want. Um, we're not going to do 20. We can either do 10 or 13. And I said, 13? Is that all right? And he said, yeah, let's do 13. So we're, uh, we did 13, and I had to pick. We had made, I had written almost all of them, and animatics for a lot more than 13. And um, I had to decide which ones to do. And this one, may, I mainly wanted to do just because for this one scene where you find out what Oral's dad does for a living, that he's the mayor and he's always been the mayor of this town. And Oral didn't even know it. Like who? Like Miss Sensordahl, for one. She loves eggs. Oh, yeah, I know, but she still agrees with me. She does. Does she? Yes, sir. You I'll admit thing. she wasn't too crazy about Censored the idea here. at first, but once I warning. So this is another uh, freeze frame shot, I think. Um, I couldn't tell if there was enough time to read this letter, uh, which is kind of important for exposition. And I showed it to a few people, and they said, I don't know if you're really paying attention. So we tried something where Clay, Scott Adsett as Clay, um, were inside his head and he's reading a few of the words here and there, sort of the key bullet points of the letter. Uh, and hopefully that gets people's attention to really read the letter and understand uh, what it's saying. We decided to ratify the slightest embargo on ovular delicacy. We all enjoy eggs. Your days are not going to be extremely numbered. <laughs> right along with us. Oh, also one little uh, coincidence, um, uh, Miss Sensordahl's name. It was great that it ended, uh, the last name was a C, uh, because then I made her first and middle initial, Frances Clara FC, so uh, it, FCC is, are her initials, and she's all in charge of censoring things in the town, so I thought that was cute. <laughs> I'm not so sure your Miss Sensordahl really wants eggs illegal. But she said she did. Well, you see, Oral, people don't always say what's on their mind. They don't? That's silly. Oh, don't ever call it silly, son. Not saying what's on our mind is what this country's based on. But eggs still need to be illegal. Oral! Come on, Dad, you know they're wrong! Think about it. Think about where they come hmm. from. I mean, they practically squirt hmm. right out of that real huh? Huh? Ah. Oh, I mean, golly, can you imagine huh? that? So we played a lot with this montage inside Clay's head. Uh, one of the things we wanted to express is that he did get actually turned on by eggs and where they come from. And part of the reason is they represent the mother uh, figure and nurturing. And it's something that we learned from a previous episode from Passing, which was on like maybe three or four before this, which is about Clay's childhood, <clears throat> that his mother died when he was young. And... Um, and he was sort of the cause of it, in a way. 
Uh, so he has a lot of guilt with the mother. It's a very <laughs> ridiculously psychological episode that I don't know if the point comes across if you're just watching it. Uh, hopefully, you just kind of experience it and you go, wow, that was kind of an interesting, fun episode. And, uh, you know, whether you don't get it intellectually or not right away, it makes you feel a certain way. <clears throat> but now I'm like really hammering it in to you guys now. But um, so when we were working on this montage, we decided um, to bring uh, some shots from the previous episode where he is a kid to really hammer it in that he's connecting eggs and chickens and chickens laying eggs with his mother and there's this sort of Oedipal thing happening and, um, you know, which is fodder for a lot more hilarious comedy. Okay, all right, you win. I'm disgusting. I mean, it's disgusting. Eggs are disgusting and illegal, okay? Happy! Okay, so this was an afterthought too. Um, Garrett Elkins, who's the editor, did an amazing job here. And, um, and, and also Chris McKay helped a lot with this episode. But uh, uh, I thought we needed to, uh, to set up... One of my ideas was that the Alone episode that happened earlier was sort of... Uh, every segment from that episode was a, one character's dream. And that the Miss Sensor Doll episode is actually Clay's dream and that maybe it didn't happen or maybe it did and um, so we uh, inserted this uh, segment where Clay is actually we see Clay dreaming part of this the episode from alone you might shoot it off by mistake Burning mistakes well, don't want me <sighs> and of course uh, we we'll allude to the idea that Perhaps Miss Sensordow or Clay thinks Miss Sensordow was um, responsible for him shooting Oral in the Nature episode. Hi, y'all, Oral. How's the hunting leg treating you? Oh, really great, Mr. Figarelli. It doesn't constantly hurt a lot anymore. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sometimes I actually have moments where it just hurts a normal amount. And then we go into the present, um, which is the day after Oral comes back and it's Easter. Actually, this next scene is probably a week after Easter, um, and uh, but the Easter decorations are still up, and you see the uh, the Easter bunny cut out with the joke about you know trying watermelons, dying watermelons instead of eggs. So we also <clears throat> combine the egg uh, subplot or major plot actually in this episode. Ah. Uh. There's one now. Oh, oops. See you later, Les Payne. What's all this, Oral? Payne? Hunting leg? Yeah, my dad. The mayor? Uh, yeah, and I went hunting. The mayor went hunting, and you were hurt? Well, my leg was. I shot myself. I see. The mayor's a responsible man. He couldn't do it. No, ma'am. In fact, he was extremely responsible for illegalizing an A. Only a hunter could so bravely hunt down those criminals. Yes, ma'am. No, your father is certainly not a nester. A nester? Yes, you know. A mother bird caring for her precious, fragile eggs. But eggs are evil. No, Oral. Eggs are life. Nesting is life. Hunting is death. It's what our good mayor runs this town on. Not life. Nesting. So, uh, I'm trying to figure out this episode as I'm watching it. Uh, Miss Sensordow has seen an inroad in that Oral's been shot, a way to get rid of the mayor. Um, if she gets rid of the mayor, perhaps there's a way that she can make eggs legal again. So she's got a little plot um, that she's hatching. Pun not intended, but it works perfectly. Uh, and she's hatching for the future. Um, anyone wanna buy anything? No need for your lifeless prepackaged items, Figurelli. 
the seeds of spring have been well planted. See you in the fall, Oral. <laughs> Daffy Bride. Nesting. Stinking dead end job. Shouldn't you be campaigning to keep your stinking dead end job? Me? Campaign? What other person in his right mind would want to anchor himself to a situation like mine? Mayor Triarch. Oh, great! It's ready! Thanks, Mom! What's going on around here? Oral is Miss Sensordahl's campaign manager. <coughs> and now, please welcome the next Mayor Triarch of Marlton, Francis Clara Sensordahl! Citizen! Our fair town is yearning for the guiding wing of a nurturing, life-giving matriarch. Moralton will finally be shed free of its savage, nest-upsetting hunter mare who shakes our precious nest and shatters our fragile life eggs. Yikes. Would you like one, ma'am? Here you go, sir. Oral. I know. Meet you in your study. Here you go. That pamphlet um, uh, where it says "Say yes to Nestor's," um, it was uh, spelled wrong. Nestor's was O R instead of E R. We had to change it in post. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you that, except that it was kind of funny because Nestor is a long-eared donkey. I don't know if you're from another stop-motion show. Okay, so um, since we've we lost a few episodes uh, in the negotiations, uh, there I wanted to have a, a, maybe one or two episodes where we see Oral and Clay's relationship um, after the hunting accident, and what I wanted to show was Clay avoiding Oral, not being able to look into his eyes, not talking to him. And, you know, pretty much six months of this happening. Um, because we only had 13 episodes, I had to sort of establish that all in this episode. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that really got across. Uh, probably not. But there is a line coming up later where Oral says, you know, you had six months to talk to me. Uh, which kind of comes out of nowhere. But... Uh, um, and also, um, another reason, reason I really wanted to do this episode is because it is about elections and this is an election year. And actually, if the show would have started somewhere in uh, September, it probably would have ended, uh, I think, for a while on the schedule. Uh, this episode fell on November 2nd or 3rd, whatever that Sunday is, and which is like the Sunday right before elections. Um, and I thought that would have been cool. It, it, it kind of was a, uh, a coincidence at first, and then, uh, and then I started gearing it more toward the idea that it might fall during an election, and it's about hunting male and, you know, nurturing female, and I also thought that would be interesting if it was, you know, Hillary Clinton running uh, against, uh, what's his name? And uh, uh, although I, you know, I'm, I'm much happier that Obama is, um, but it would have been nice for more oral if uh, Hillary was doing it. Um, but anyway, so since Hillary isn't running, I thought, all right, who cares when this airs? I don't know when it's going to air now. It, it might air sometime in November, but probably after the elections. How, um, how are... Things. I think we should get right to the lecture and punishment because I have a lot to do. Whoa, ho, Mr. Busy! You had six months to talk. The last six months were not filled with you helping a madwoman campaign against me and my job. You don't even like your job. Like? Like? No one likes their job. Have you ever listened to anything I've ever said in here? Does this chair absorb my voice? Do all these dead animal heads eat my words before they get to your delicate little ears? Can I go now? You know that thing you do with your hands and mouth and throat and stomach? That thing called eating? Well, say goodbye to that thing forever if I lose my position in this town because of you. I will. Okay. You can go.
Mayor Clayton, middle initial Puppington, how do you defend your recent prohibition on eggs? <laughs> Here we go. Reverend moderator, citizens of Moralton, friends. I have been criticized quite intensely for the outlawing of our little gooey breakfast buddies. I have been called a callous hunter by my esteemed opponent. Does hunting and death really pose such a horrible threat to this town? Death, dear friends, is the best thing ever. Death is the beginning of our everlasting life. The only eggs I smash are the eggs of filth, the inhuman eggs that squeeze with vile evil through the tantalizingly moist passage of feminine foul temptation, protruding from our mother bit by bit with wrongful, erotic succulence, completely enveloped by that soiled, evil, maternal opening. Mommy, I'm here. So you see that dissolve there that happens. Um, we had some uh, leftover uh, little boy clay heads. Um, uh, clay as a little boy. And uh, I thought it would be nice. Uh, actually, Scott, during the, um, the voiceover sessions, went into his little boy voice when he said, Mommy. And I thought that was brilliant and, um, uh, and subtle. And I took away uh, the subtlety and actually put the little boy head on the puppet, uh, which, you know, might be a mistake. But, uh, you know, we had the heads around. What the hell? Uh, sorry. That's it. Vote Puffington. Okay. Miss Sincerdahl, your rebuttal? I have no rebuttal. I hereby concede to my worthy opponent and withdraw my candidacy for mayor. <laughs> what? So, I don't know if it's clear um, that uh, she withdraws from the uh, from the election because she knows she has them where she wants them. The way he talked about eggs, they're kindred spirits and and she saw his vulnerability and realized that now she can control him any way she wants and doesn't need to be mayor. Um, at least that's what I got out of it. <laughs> Miss Sensordahl, what about your whole platform on nesting? Look, Oral, a lady has no business running for office when there are books to burn. See you at the library. Oh, Oral, I've been a bad dad, I admit it, okay? I'm sorry about shooting you. I'm sorry about the ignoring blah, 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 all of that. Now that we've made up, you gotta tell me what that witch is up to. You gotta, Oral, please. People just don't say what's on their mind, Dad. Don't give me that! That's my line! Well, guess it's true. Well, of course it's true! The mind is a scary, scary, scary thing! Why? Because somewhere, way down deep inside, in its twisted catacombs and dank, dark hallways, there's an even scarier, more horribly monstrous entity. W what Truth. Tell me the truth, Oral. Uh, I don't know, Dad. Uh-huh. Don't know? Okay. Well, I take everything back! And I'm glad I shot you. I got some business to attend to. Why? Why did you withdraw from the election? Hmm. Sit down. Okay, so now we've, uh... Fast forward to the winter, Christmas time, where the next episode takes place, and the scene is actually another angle from a scene that we're going to see later. And um, Clay, the elections are over. Clay is still worried about Censor Dahl. What is she up to? Um, and uh, sits down to have this conversation with her. What do you have up your sleeve? You have special powers, don't you? You made me shoot Oral. I know it. I had a dream. You flatter me, young Puppington. Young? I'm your age. In years, maybe. But I'm older where it really counts. <gasps> Looks. Hmm. And confidence. You're right. I can't do anything. Wrong. You can do 
everything, as long as Mummy says you can. Mummy? Yes. Mummy. Mummy. <gasps> what do I do? I'm at the end of my rope. My kid, my wife, two illegitimate kids. Oh, I wish there was something somewhere that I could pump full of my anger. Something that wouldn't produce another life. There is. I was thinking after that line, we could cut to Coach stop frame, just going, uh, hey, what about me over here? Uh, but I thought about that too late, actually. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Wait till you see what happens next. That, my dear Mayor, is the only egg you'll ever find down there. Mm. Mm. So, uh, what we set up in Alone, which was actually Chris McKay's amazing idea, is that uh, Miss Sensordal is obsessed with eggs because she doesn't have her own. Uh, her mother uh, removed them from her, um, I suppose in some sort of form of female castration technique, when she was a baby. And uh, it kind of explains why, you know, she's such a uh, I'm sure that'll get cut out, but uh, <laughs> it explains why she's a bitch. Your mommy little hatchling. So yeah, they're kissing now. And um, the song that's playing in the background is an instrumental version, kind of a spooky instrumental version of a song that was supposed to be in the next episode. I have this idea that I wanted a uh, kind of a, uh, a marrying, like an answer song to Grandma Got Run Over by Reindeer and I Saw Mama Ki Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. And uh, so the lyrics were, I saw Santa kissing Grandma's corpse uh, underneath the mistletoe last night. And, uh, or whatever the, the lyrics are. And, uh, um, the, uh, the music guy who, uh, uh, Mark Rivers had to leave, he went to New York for another job and we got Eben Schleder to do it, who's uh, really great, a really great music guy too. And he, he wrote all these lyrics and they were astoundingly shocking. And uh, uh, maybe we'll put it on the DVD if there ever is one. But uh, we, we didn't actually, there was no room for any of the lyrics actually. I couldn't even get the actual first joke of uh, Santa kissing grandma's corpse in because there was really no room. There was like dialogue and, uh, and it also said some, because Clay is kissing Miss Sensordal uh, who seems like an older woman and it seemed like a comment on that when, when it really wasn't. It was supposed to be just like a non sequitur joke so we didn't end up using it. Um, Anyway, uh, that's it for that episode. Thanks, and uh, stick around for one more. Anything you want,